All right, good morning. Uh, this video might look a little different just because I have to show details and stuff uh, on the frame and stuff just so you could see it. So I might not have the contrast so high or unfortunately this video might have to be in color. I'm not sure yet. If you're watching this video, you know what my solution was, but I'm gonna teach you guys um, exactly how to complete a 76% finished um, P80 frame. So a little backstory of why these things exist. Uh, P80s are 80% finished frames. This is a Glock 19 frame. They're 80% finished frames that you can um, finish yourself with this jig or just by hand. And um, you get an unserialized firearm at the end of it because these are not considered firearms. Um, see, there's no serial number on it. This is not considered a firearm. And then with a little bit of work and effort here in America, we're allowed to build guns. And here in Pennsylvania, we're allowed to build guns. So I'm allowed to build guns and carry the guns that I build around. So this is 100% legal for me. But as this sits right now, it's not a firearm. Now, go to 2022 and the ATF makes a ruling saying that P80s, 80% finished um, frames, are um, illegal. They're considered firearms. So what we have right now are these 76% um, bridge frames that have been out for almost three years now. Uh, it's about two years, but or almost three years now. And uh, we're actually, the case is actually in the Supreme Court now, but the issue is P80 just filed for uh, bankruptcy. So who knows what's going to happen. If you want a P, an actual P80, an 80% finished lower, you have to go through an FFL for that, unfortunately. So you might as well just get a complete lower. There's no point to getting a P80 anymore and you can't, you can't get them shipped to your door. This got shipped directly to my door, but they call it 76% finished. But the thing is, it's about 60% finished, I'd say. And if you want to learn how to do it before this video, you had to go. I spent two hours figuring out every single thing, going from video to video, and nobody in one video explains everything to do. So that's what I'm going to do. I can't build it. I can't file or show you anything. I can't put tools onto this thing and show you because YouTube won't allow me. But I'm going to tell you in this one video everything you need to do to complete this to a 100% lower. And then in the future, I'll make an assembly video. So I'm going to point out some of the things that you, um, that you have to do, you know, and things that are new. So if you don't know for P80s, the work that you have to do are you have to drill two holes here and there's a third hole here somewhere. Where's the dimple at? There's a third hole around right here. There's a little dimple there too, to show you exactly where that comes drilled out on the P80. But for the P76 uh, with this one, you have to drill out one, two, and then three and four back here. There's a fourth one back here as well. You have to drill a total of four holes. Now this jig for the P80 only, only is prepared for three of the holes. The one on the back of the grip, the trigger pin, and um, I don't know if this is the locking pot, blocking block pin, but point is you only get three of the holes on the original jig because the original P80 came with this hole already drilled. Now there's some tips online of how you can line up the hole um, for these P76s. You can also buy a DLD um, jig online, but they're more expensive. So I just got one of these and I'll deal with the hole because the thing is, you, I'm going to try to show you guys, and this is why the video might look different. See that little dimple? That little dimple right there is exactly where it has to go. So on this, on the P76, you have to drill four holes rather than three holes from the P80. And, and the jig does not uh, cover that. You have to figure it out on your own or get a, a custom jig, you know. All right, so moving on. The most notable thing when it comes to these 76% finished frames versus the 80 is this grid back here. This is going to be the most time consuming right here uh, is getting this grid out. Now I recommend getting a file set, a uh, mini file set, having uh, clippers, uh, different kinds of pliers and stuff just to try and get it out. Some people use Dremels. I don't have a Dremel um, and I want to do this with hand tools with a file. Um, and also you're going to need um, flush cutters as well. 
but this is going to be the most time consuming. There's a bunch of different ways to do this online. The reason I'm not going to give you a list of tools and exactly how to do things is because everybody online does it differently. And I honestly don't even have my solution for this yet. I'm probably going to take an X-Acto knife and cut all of these points of contact and then file and sand it down. I'm not going to rush it. The key to making these things is to take your time. Do not rush it. And I'm going to, I have a couple months to do this. So I'm going to, my goal is to make this as perfect as possible. You know, I'm not a machine, but I wanna get as close to machine milling as possible. So this is the most notable because this is gonna be the most time consuming. And that's new to the P76s that you did not have to deal with with the P80. Now moving on, you have these tabs right here. Here, I'll point them out. I should be using this anyway. You have these tabs right here, not these back here. This holds the, uh, this holds the, um, the slide on and the jig will actually point this out um the jig actually you know covers it and says remove right here and remove right here but just to point out this back plate thing that's separate you don't want to cut that off there's two tabs right here and there's another one right here and then you have these two tabs these two longer tabs boom right here and right here and you're going to want flush cutters you're going to want to take some flush cutters cut them file it sand it that the jig when you put it in the jig, it lines it up right here. Here, I'll show you that it says remove. I don't know if you could see that. Yeah, it says remove one. That's where those tabs will be. And you can just line it up and then remove two right here. See, it covers the back where the, uh, that holds the slide. So you can't accidentally do that, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, another thing that was on the P80 that um, I started working on actually is this, this um, channel right here. This was on the P80. Everything that the P80... All the work you had to do to P80s, you also have to do to P76s. But this was also on the P80, this um, channel right here. You can see I started filing it. This is the work that I started doing. This hole right here that you can see, that's the filing. It goes all the way down to, let's see if I can show you where the pen goes. It's kind of hard to do this in the camera. Okay, I'm touching the bottom. It goes down to here, and then it goes around like this. And it goes around all the way. So I'm going to have to file all the way down. So that channel you want to clear out as well. And now for the two, for the things that um, people don't, nobody fucking points out. So some people point these out. These are new additions to the rail for the, um, for the locking block. And let me get a little closer so you can really know what I'm talking about. That line right there, right here. I don't want to, there we go. That, these two things right here. You want to get those out. They go all the way down, and I'll show you the locking block. There's these new split locking blocks, apparently for, um, I don't know, something to do with assembly and something to do with um, not as much tension on the parts, you know, something to... I, I read online why they split the front rails now, because the locking block used to be used to be like this, connected, but that's not the case anymore. So if you see the locking block won't actually go down because you have to get rid of the things that I just pointed out. But nobody, except for one person, I forget his name, one, only one person pointed out these tabs right here where the front rails go. If you notice, the front rails also don't go in. And that's because these front rails, oh, I gotta see if you guys can get it. Oh, it's so hard to see. But right on the side of this C, or like right on the side of this um, concave where the barrel, uh, where it's got room for the barrel, right on the sides, these slits right here. I really want you to see those tabs in there. Those slits in there. Let's see if I can get the light right. Fuck. It's kind of hard to get. Maybe I should have had a flashlight for this. There we go. You can kind of see them. But um, these there's little there's bumps in there, you know. There's little tabs in there, and those are going to be a pain in the ass. I'm going to take a small file, and I'm just going to slowly do that. Like I said, I'm going to take my time and um, and do this very slowly. So those are the things you want to remove. I'll go over it real quick. Uh, P80 things. P80 things will be one, two, three holes, one tab, two tab three tab, four tab, and then the channel right here. That's what you have to do for P80s. So if you're just building, if you happen to have a P80, then uh, that's all you need to do to build it. But if you have a P76, what you also have to do is get rid of this grid, get rid of these two tabs in here for the locking block, get rid of these two tabs for the front rails, 
and then get rid of the third hole as well here. I'm pretty sure I covered everything, and then I'll do an assembly video in the future. Um, but yeah, these things are pretty cool. I'm getting into these. Nothing to do with the magwell. That's cool. Um, I'm getting into these. It's solid. I like this frame a lot. Um, I'm getting into these because of the unserialization. There's no serial number, and these things can just disappear, you know, um, which is what I'm really interested in. And it takes all Gen 3 Glock parts, you know. I just wanted to get all the information out there of how to do this because it took me hours to gather all the information on how to do this, especially with these two tabs here for the um, front rails. It took me forever to confirm that you do get rid of them. Don't just drill into them. Get rid of them, then drill them. And there's those dimples, like I said, for the drill holes. It shouldn't be hard. Um, yeah, it takes Gen 3 Glock parts. I'm going to get a PSA sw5 slide for it when it's ready and then i'm going to work on an ar and i'll tell you guys exactly how to do that um i just wanted to make this video um i'm no expert but i just wanted to make this video because i wanted all of the information to be in one place why these things exist why they're valuable and what you have to remove all in one video um but yeah, those are the things to remove. Um, and another notable thing is it's very hard plastic polymer. It is it is a frame. It is a very solid frame. I feel very confident about um this. But keep that in mind when you're doing this. Like, I don't know why I had it in my mind that it would be much easier to file these things. But if you could see the effort that I've put into that channel right there, you could see how far down I've gone. And I spent. I don't know, a solid hour doing it yesterday. So the there are people online who build these things and they go, oh, these suck. Just get a regular P80. But that the thing is, with a regular P80, you have to go through an FFL and you have to get a serial. It has to have a serial number. And you might as well. Why, why am I putting work into a gun that already has a serial number? I'll just get a 100% finished frame or just a gun with a slide already on it. And they and and this one dude online, I forget his name, and even if I remembered his name, I wouldn't say it. Um, but he said, uh, he said these guns suck. I commented. He he said these guns suck. Uh, these gun. The title was like P eighty seventy six percent lower frames are terrible. And he's like, well, I mean, if you want to take your time, yeah, I guess it'll be fine. I just burned through my shit and I just hurried up. And then he fucked up all the pins and everything. He's like, man, I really fucked up these pins. And he's talking shit on the frame. I left a comment saying it's not a problem with the product. You've said multiple times if I would have taken my time, it would have been fine. It's if you don't use the thing properly or work on it properly, of course anything can be garbage. So these products only exist because um, P80s are banned by the ATF right now. But the cool thing about the owner of the company, I don't know if he's the owner, somebody high up in the company, certainly can speak for the company, I think the owner, he said that uh, when it passes, when we get through this with the Supreme Court ruling, um, if we're allowed to buy P-80s again without um, without background checks, because you don't need a background check for this, this got delivered straight to my door, then he'll replace all these 76 bridge frames with P-80 frames, the better ones. And they're calling this the bridge frame because it's the bridge between, um, during this illegal era you know between legal and legal phases this is the bridge frame although you know uh the amount of work as of right now these are available i can't even find p80s anywhere even if i wanted a p80 through an ffl i can't find them anywhere and uh this is um these are available and they're affordable this was 80 bucks this is 80 bucks and i got the complete rail kit for 50 bucks i spent 130 uh, after taxes and shipping it was 151 delivered straight to my door now it does say on their website i got this from mass defense i'm trying to get everything out that i know so i don't have to leave a comment saying oh i forgot i got this from mass defense mas defense llc or mass moss however you pronounce it um they've got them available and they've got the rail kits with it and it, it lists where they can't send it to and here in pa it only says um pennsylvania city uh, Philadelphia. So you can't buy these in Philadelphia. You can't get, if you live here in PA and you live in Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, you can't get these shipped to you because it won't, they won't ship them. But that's the only city in Pennsylvania where you can't. I heard word of Reading not allowing it at one point, but I don't think that went through. At least you can still get them. And I heard word of Pittsburgh, I believe as well. But again, same thing as Reading. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can still just get them shipped to you. It's Philly where you can't get them shipped. And then there's a whole list of uh, 
states on there. So as long as you live in a freedom state, a real state that believes in the Constitution, or one close enough like Pennsylvania, you can get this shipped directly to your door. Uh, and with a little bit of patience, a little bit of effort, you'll end up with an unserialized Glock 19 frame that takes Gen 3 parts that, um, yeah, doesn't exist to the government, which I think is the most, this is going to be my most valuable firearm once it is a firearm. As of right now, this is not a firearm. Um, but once it becomes a firearm, it will be my most valuable firearm because I built it myself. Uh, I don't own any Glock 19, so this will be my first Glock 19, and it can disappear, you know, and, and what I mean by disappear is it's just, you know, like, I know I'm making a video of this, but hope, um, but that doesn't matter, it can still vanish, you know, <laughs> it can still vanish. Um, I, I think that's about it, With without me talking in circles, I'm gonna head out later.